<laughs> no way. <laughs> oh shit. I installed this version and uh, it seems like Sarge's head was ported onto the model called Minx. So now I've got a really nice lady boy with the big titties uh, in this game. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I, th I think that's a very attractive person. And we are not, I repeat, we are not allowed to judge hi him, her for this decision. <laughs> Hello there guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Game Story Time. Thanks to everyone who commented on the last video for your lovely feedback. For those who don't know, in this series we will talk about our greatest memories about video games and anything gaming related. I would like to remind you to share your stories in the comments section and maybe I will comment on your story in the following episode. It doesn't need to be retro at all, just tell me what gaming related moment touched you or you remember very vividly. That's one way I want you to get to know me a little better. And of course I want to get to know you. Today's user story is from KimonZZ, a regular visitor on my channel. I'm gonna read the comment real quick. My gaming story is based on a Need for Speed series. I like cars a lot so I spend a lot of time on these, especially Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. At my age I was playing it without knowing what's the goal. Today I'm still playing these games on console which kind of sucks compared to PC. I totally get the nostalgia about racing games. I feel the same way about Burnout, I think it was the third one called Takedown which I played a lot with my cousin. This was at the age where you prefer arcade racers over simulators. Nowadays I'm not all that much into racing games. The last one I played and really enjoyed was Dirt 3 because it was the perfect balance between simulation and arcade racing to me. Needless to say I mastered all the platinum challenges. Even the freaking bobsleigh track. Ugh. Anyway. I disagree with you that playing these games on PC is better. To me, racers are so much more fun on console because you can lay back and have fun instead of sitting at a fucking desk. Anyway, thanks for sending your story in. Alright, my story number 5 is about Quake 3 Arena which you've seen in the background just now. I was introduced to this game by, hold on to your seats, my grandpa. Not the one that gave me my first PC, but the other one who also happened to be more technologically advanced than my mom. <sighs> so whenever I went to visit my grandparents for lunch I was allowed to spend some time playing on that PC. Normally I would just boot up Microsoft Flight Simulator 2000 or something, which I remember had amazing graphics. Eh, not so much. But then one day there was this game on the desktop which I just instantly double clicked because this logo freaking intrigued me so much. I mean just look at it. And what happened then was basically the continuation of my FPS career after Turok 2. Only that Quake was so much faster and relentless, but therefore brutally addicting. Just look at the gameplay I recorded for this video. I can really recommend that you get this game and play it right now. I gotta admit I was around 12 years old tops when I started playing Quake. Needless to say I wasn't mentally fit for the task. There are maps that show you huge inverted crosses. Which by the way for this very reason was my favorite map. And dismembered bodies and of course the extreme gore effects when you'd kill someone. One night I had actual nightmares from this guy right here. This hollow stare of a decapitated guy. Fuck. But this was also the time I started listening to metal so this shock I felt at the time also intrigued me to go deeper. I kept playing and visited my grandparents more often than ever. Nobody even cared that I played this game at my age. At some point I was so good at it I actually beat it at the second highest difficulty rating. The highest was just too frustrating because you're basically competing against aimbots at this point. Years later I actually managed to finish all the tiers at nightmare level. What a coincidence this name is, huh? Just listen to the sound this difficulty makes when selecting it. It still makes me shiver to this day.
Hashtag SFX Nerd. In the weapons department, Quake 3 Arena was so cool because it forced you to deal with whatever you could get your hands on. But all of them had their own use cases and were lethal as hell. The most recognizable weapon is of course the rocket launcher because it had this amazing capability to just tear multiple enemies to shreds due to the huge splash damage it dealt. I really loved the railgun too because it was the exact opposite of that. Most of the time you'd get a one hit kill on an enemy resulting in a big bloody fountain. When I played this a lot I had become extremely good at aiming with this thing. Dueling with Klesk was always like some kind of sci-fi version of a western. One real crazy thing about Quake was that you could partly chat with these bots you were competing against and they would spew out insults all the time too. But when I was bored I just went into the first tutorial level against Crash and set it to the lowest difficulty. This basically just means that she just walks around and barely shoots at all. You can even stay inside the first room to be 100% safe. That way I had enough time to chit chat with her and she actually freaking replied. So I had a very lucky string of AI answers which felt completely genuine for me at the time. With my limited English skills and at a young age I was completely mind blown and thought that this virtual character actually had some sort of a soul. I was talking to a machine. What the hell? Just for the giggles I asked her if she'd marry me, which she harshly declined. I'm not kidding you. Just watch this video by Marifitimus Blackimus. He did the same thing. To this day I actually boot up Quake 3 Arena from time to time for that quick rush of adrenaline of a quick shooter without any map loading, connection issues or assholes who post insults in the chat. Well I mean real assholes. Artificial assholes are okay I guess. So yeah that was another game story. Let me know what you think of this series and don't forget to share your own priceless experiences with gaming. Thank you for watching Venova. Over.